Good morning, St. Paul's. So on the day of Pentecost, the disciples were all gathered in one place, and the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out on them and birthed the movement that was the Christian church. Today, whether you are gathered here with us in person or gathered with us online, you are welcome here. And we are so blessed to celebrate the movement of the spirit that has continued through history and continues to guide us this day as we worship together our triune God. <laughs> Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you also. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, and now and forever. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
our hearts and minds, O God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that as the word is read and proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us this day. Amen. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided bones as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound of the, of the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that they will hear each of us in our own native language? Persians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Syrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above and signs in earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord.
Our reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is with that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. According to John, when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Spirit, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. Of any, 
The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. If you're doing a double take this morning, reading our bulletin and looking up here in the pulpit, curious to know why I am standing here, maybe wondering why Jeff's sermon title is called Surprise. You'll be, you'll be sad to know that there is no grand entrance from Jeff, no preacher paragliding in on Pentecost to create dramatic cause and effect. There is none of that this Sunday. This is a we're down two pastors waiting on the new one post-annual conference week. Oh no, Jeff's out with COVID. Who's got a sermon ready for this Sunday? And the answer is me. I keep one on hand because the 50 days between Easter and Pentecost are days for us to grow, a time for spiritual maturing. Much like the seasons of Advent and Lent, these 50 days are special in that they begin with the joyous celebration of Easter Sunday, and they call us into a new season, a new mindset where we are renewed with resurrection hope. And we can reimagine God's good future where we dream dreams and see new visions of a God whose life and love have conquered sin and death. For 50 days, we get to imagine what this world might look like, how this might be, who might be gathered in around the table with us to bring that good vision to be. For 50 days, God invites us into this work through work at the art tent in our health clinic, through music ministry and worship, through Rutabaga and McGregor, through UM Army and VBS. God gives us 50 days to prepare ourselves for the unleashing of power by God's Holy Spirit on our hearts, on our church, and on the world. 50 days to prepare for the transforming work of God's Holy Spirit. And and this question before us is really a simple one. Are you ready and are you willing? Because what God is about to do in the inbreaking of the Holy Spirit, what God is going to do on this Pentecost day will reorder hierarchies. It will rebalance the scales and usher in a kind of church, a kind of kingdom that doesn't play by the rules we've been taught that it doesn't adhere to the norms and the customs of a genteel society. This is a God who is done with all of that. A God who isn't disillusioned by the carefully crafted structures that hold up our lives like a house of cards. No, this is a God who is the creator, a God who has redeemed us from the very pits of hell, a God who is now recreating a new heaven, a new earth, A God who says, are you ready? Are you willing to be part of something that doesn't look like the world is trying to hand to you? But instead looks like the kingdom that I am going to hand you. A new heaven. A new earth. Sisters and brothers in Christ, this is the language of Genesis and Revelation. This is the language of redemption and revival. This is the language of a world coming together hearing their own languages speak, spoken and reimagining everything that they thought they knew. This is what was felt when Acts 2 was read aloud in our most sacred space. This 
is the power of Pentecost. And for those very first followers of Christ, on that very first Pentecost day, this was most definitely a surprise. Because before God had been poured out, the day was known and celebrated as the festival of Shavuot, a harvest festival for giving thanks to God for the first fruits of what they had planted and nurtured. And to mark this special day, the devout followers from all over the kingdom of God would, would bring their first fruits, would bring their very first grains to God's holy temple and give thanks for the blessings that God had rained upon them, that God had caused to grow from the earth. And so knowing this little piece of history, knowing this little nugget of wisdom, can you begin to see this scene of Pentecost oozing with the imagery of what God is about to do? God is calling God's holy people together. God is bringing all of us in for the harvest because God has prepared them to feed the nations, to witness to the world the depth and the love of God. But this work that God is calling them into, this work that you and I are being called into, is too much for us to do alone. It's too big for us to imagine and live into, which is why on this harvest day of festival celebrations, as people bring our very best to God, God brings the very best to us, an advocate, a Holy Spirit to be with us to the ends of the ages as a guide, as a friend, as a redemptive transforming power to bring in the harvest. And we know that this is what God is going to do because the very last words that Jesus speaks to his followers, the very thing that we hear before Christ has ascended is this promise that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you, says Jesus, and you will be my witnesses throughout Judea and Sumeria and to the ends of the earth. Those very first disciples and believers who are gathered in for this feast and are gathering with their fellow Jews in Jerusalem testify to their future hope, a hope for the unity of God's people, a hope for restoration, a hope for the ingathering of all who have been scattered. It is a vision that Israel's prophets foresaw, a future when God would gather together people just like this harvest day and make them whole for the Jewish diaspora to be reunited, to be once again witnesses to give glory to God before the nations, to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. But the story of Pentecost, the one that we find here in Acts, holds two very important surprises for those believers who see this vision and feel called to bring about its manifestation. And the first is that in Acts chapter 2, we see a widening of this prophetic vision for a reunited diaspora. Being on this side of scripture and understanding um, what is to come next certainly makes us think that those in the Acts 2 story have clouded vision and judgment. But these early disciples who have gathered together in their home are still a very distinctly Jewish community. The followers begin in this room as a homogenous group. They're all speaking the same tongue. They all come from the same culture. They worship the same God. They are all hoping that the Holy Spirit will come and it will make Israel great again. But when the Holy Spirit comes, it comes suddenly. It comes when they don't expect it. It comes like a violent wind, a wind that could tear off the very roof of that house and scatter people to the ends of the earth. And then divided tongues appear, and divided tongues are like fire, and those tongues sit on each gathered here in the room. And those people suddenly find themselves speaking new and different languages, languages from countries near and far. And yet in the midst of all of those languages being spoken from the ends of the earth being spoken are clear and understood words. What these followers of Jesus come to realize is that God isn't bound by the same identity and culture and languages that they were. Redemption and power doesn't belong to one people or one way of being in the world. God was bringing restorative power to all people, to people within and without the norms and the customs of Israel. 
Because God isn't interested in saving just a few. God isn't checking his list to see who's been naughty or nice. No, God is bringing about redemption, bringing about salvation, bringing a spirit to all people, a power to all places on earth. And when the Holy Spirit descends upon those believers in Jerusalem, it doesn't descend upon them like a dove. That's not what we read. That's not what we read here in this scripture. That's not how the early church experienced the inbreaking of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't this calm and, and beautiful moment like Wesley's Aldersgate moment where he feels his heart suddenly and strangely warmed. No. To quote the movie Jaws, what the disciples felt and what they quickly realized is we are going to need a bigger boat. This is why when Peter goes outside to explain to the crowd what has happened, he connects this, spirit, this experience with what is written by the prophet Joel. Because Joel has declared that God's spirit will be poured out on all human beings. All of the sons and daughters, young and old, slave and servant. And they would begin to prophesy. They would begin to see visions and dream dreams. And Peter comes before the world and says, this has happened. It is happening. The day has come. The harvest is ready. The Spirit has been poured out upon these disciples and these tongues of fires have rested upon them. But what they also discover in this moment is another truth that the tongues of fire will not settle on a particular people. They will settle into people who will go out to the world to preach and to teach. Joel was right in that the sons and the daughters would dream dreams, but not just the sons and the daughters of Israel. It would also include the sons and the daughters of Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. God's Spirit was there in that very room, but it wasn't going to stay in that room forever. It was on the move. Exciting things were beginning to happen. God is moving things around and God is going to move those disciples. God is going to move you and I and empower the believers to set about loving and caring and redeeming this world. This, this is the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is the second thing which those believers come to understand that the Holy Spirit cannot be contained by those who have received it. The Holy Spirit is not theirs to keep, it's not, it's not theirs to hold on to, but it is a gift to give. It is our life to share and live with others. Peter tells the people outside that house that through baptism, through your baptism, you will also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is for you and it is for others. It is for those who are near and those who are far, because this, this Spirit of God is poured out upon all people, and it comes like a violent wind, ready and able to break down the walls of division, ready to blow off the roof of whatever house we are hiding under and scatter us to the ends of the earth. And when we think about Pentecost and all of, its, this, all of, all of the formation of the early church, the, the birth of the church, we have to remember that the, Church is not about my way and my personal biases, but it is about God's way. God's way, God's church enacts these border crossings, not the construction of walls. God's way builds up the church. God is the people who are going out with a message to any and everyone who can hear that sweet song of hope and salvation. And when we take part of this, when we, when we truly live out the, the joy and the power of our baptismal covenant, when we allow the Holy Spirit to transform us rather than try to transform God's Spirit into what we want it to be, the church can become the body of Christ. It becomes more whole, more excellent, stronger, more faithful to the gospel, more beautiful. And when believers realize that this is what God is doing, calling us to a wider inclusion, a greater diversity towards outsiders and insiders alike, we can come to find that the Spirit of God is global in its nature. And it must be given away. It must be given away by us over and over again. We must continue to see walls broken down, 
where hierarchies and patriarchies have no place in this world. This is what happens when we allow the Spirit to blow as it goes, rather than holding on to it to keep it for ourselves, to mold it in our image. But church, if we're going to be really honest with ourselves, that is the hardest thing to do. That is so easy to want to keep the gospel for ourselves. It's so easy to read scriptures and practice our faith because it doesn't hold us as accountable to the story that we hear in Acts. It's easy to think that we know everything that we need to know and not be bothered about it anymore. But the truth is we still live in a broken and hurting world. We still live in a society where mass shootings are the norm, where health care costs are unaffordable, and women are expected to bear almost all the cost of reproductive responsibility. It is a world that is so untenable, and yet little changes. Equity is too slow. Fairness is a forgotten afterthought. Justice is weighed down by partisan inaction. As the people of this Pentecost story, we are beneficiaries of those early church believers who are not afraid to share the gospel with those people from Samaria and the ends of the earth. We are beneficiaries of a gospel that has disrupted and challenged religious and political systems designed to hoard power for those at the top. And as Christians living in the 21st century, we are called to the very same. We are called to stand on the shoulders of that great cloud who witnessed to the power of a Savior like Jesus, who trusted in a wild and unruly spirit who could redeem and transform the world. And when we do this, when we are ready, when we are willing, what we find is that we cannot celebrate the day of Pentecost unless we follow the Spirit's lead, unless we look out and see the woes and the weights of this world and feel called into action. This is the gift of the Spirit. It is the gift of seeing God's vision, God's good future for the entire world and having a boldness to live into it. So if you are so bold to live in such that way, whether you are yourself a self-described holy roller or if you are a part of the frozen chosen, I've got to warn you right now that violent winds are going to blow and you are going to feel scattered and tongues of fire are going to descend upon you and call you to speak in new ways. And then you will start to dream dreams and you will see new visions. Many of you in this room have already received that gift. You have been called to see and speak. You are called to heal and to set free. I see it in the missions and the ministries that you lead. I see it in the funding you give and the hospitality that you display. But now, on this day, on this day of Pentecost, it is time for you to prophesy. It is time for you to declare the gospel, time for you to testify and to preach. And if you think that this is not your calling, then think again. Because the language, because this day is a day in which we remember the language of Genesis and Revelation, the language of redemption and revival. This, this is Pentecost. And on Pentecost, the gift of Holy Spirit passes no one by. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are lonely, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all ministers of the gospel, for all who claim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray to you, Lord God. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Would you stand if we, you are able as we exchange signs and words of God's peace and our love for one another. Welcome again, everyone. Uh, we are so glad to be here in worship with you. Uh, if you are joining us online or whether you are here in person, we would ask that you uh, would register your attendance. There are pew cards in front of you to let us know uh, that you're here. There are also on the back of that some prayer, uh, space for prayer requests. So if there's something going on that uh, we can be lifting you, holding you in prayer, please let us know. Uh, and then you can drop that in the, the offering plate as the ushers come in just a little bit. 
Uh, it is the, the day of Pentecost, and there's a lot of exciting things uh, going around uh, on, on campus today. Uh, after our 11 o'clock service, there will be popsicles for Pentecost on the plaza. Uh, so if you are a fan of alliterations, if you are a fan of popsicles, uh, the, the youth or the children's department will be uh, celebrating uh, today with some popsicles to help cool you off. So if you're around, uh, we invite you to stay for that. Uh, and then we also want you to come back this afternoon at 4 p.m. Uh, we will have a choral even song uh, right here in this space. All are welcome uh, to come and to celebrate uh, in that even song. So we, we hope that you can come back for that. Um, and just a couple of things now that we are really, really moving into the summer of, of 2022 that's hard to imagine that that we are there but here it is uh, and so if you have little ones there's some great things coming up uh, we have the pipe up and sing children's music camp it'll be starting in a couple of weeks from now uh, it's for students entering grades one through six um, and it's everything to do with movement and instruments uh, making sounds, probably joyful noise, I think would be a nice way to put that all together. Um, but we are just excited for that. So if you have little ones, grandkids, whatever it is coming in throughout the summer, it might be great to sign them up for that. Uh, and then Vacation Bible School, as always, is coming up in August. So uh, sign up your, your little ones, but also if you uh, can, can serve as a volunteer, whether you're teaching in class or helping with some of the, the different stations, uh, let Kate know, because uh, we would love to have you be a part of that. Um, as we as we get into the summer schedule. So uh, I want to invite our ushers to come forward now as we prepare our hearts for the offering. Um, and, and just a reminder that today is Communion Sunday. And so uh, this is a table that is open to everyone. Um, that this table is open to all who come to seek and know that the Lord is good. Um, so we invite you to come to this table as, as soon as it is prepared. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day. And we give you thanks for the gift of your Holy Spirit that has been poured out upon all of us. That has set us free to do the missions and ministry that you've called us into. And so may the gifts that we give go toward the wonderful ways in which your Spirit is blowing in our lives. Bringing hope and redemption to this world. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters and you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon the prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak to your, to your word. And so with your people and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your Spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved Son. With your Spirit upon him, he turned away from the temptations of sin. Your Spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire, as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks to you and broke it, shared it with his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks to you. And he shared it with his disciples saying, drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And on the day that you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts... In Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gift of the Spirit. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now, 
with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, and we all partake in the one loaf. And the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Sisters and brothers in Christ, the table is set and the feast is prepared. The ushers will help guide you to come forward. There will be two uh, standing stations where you will receive uh, a wafer and a cup. You are welcome to kneel at the rail or you are welcome to return uh, to your seat for a time of prayer and reflection. But again, all are welcome to this table. All are welcome to the love of Christ. So come, taste and see that the Lord is good.
Will you join me in the prayer after receiving? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, our time has come to an end, but our worship goes into this world. And so, go, so as you go into this world, may you go in the power of the Holy Spirit, a power that will blow off the roof of the place where you are gathered and scatter you to the world to share a message of love and redemption and salvation to all you meet. Go forth in that power. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Good morning. As we come to praise God together as a one diverse, beautiful family, in this Pentecost Sunday, we remember the fulfillment of God's promises in Jesus Christ and the gift of the Holy Spirit to the first disciples. We also remember that the love of God has been shed aboard into our hearts so that we became witnesses here and to the end of the world. Come, let us worship together. <laughs> and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you also. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit shed aboard this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Would you join me in the prayer for illumination? Open our hearts and minds, O God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that as the word is read and proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us this day. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and sign on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be returned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. God.
A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Gospel according to John. Philip said to, to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe me? Do you not be believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. 
Believe in me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than this because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask, ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. The word of God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. If you are doing a double take this morning, looking at your bulletin and looking up here at the pulpit, wondering what is going on, wondering why Jeff's sermon title is Surprise, you will be sad to know that there is no grand entrance, no preacher paragliding in for Pentecost to create dramatic effect. No, this is one of those, we're down two pastors, we're waiting for the new one, post-annual conference, oh no, Jeff's out with COVID, who's got a Pentecost sermon ready to go kind of Sunday? <laughs> and the answer is me. I keep one on hand because the 50 days between Easter and Pentecost are days of growing. They're a time for spiritual maturing. Much like the seasons of Advent and Lent, these 58 days are special days that begin with the joyous celebration of Easter, where we are called into a season, we are called into a mindset with renewed resurrection hope where we can imagine God's good future, where we dream dreams and see new vision of a God whose life and love have conquered sin and death. For 50 days, we get to imagine what that might look like, how it might be, and, and who will be gathered around the table with us. It is in those 50 days that God invites us into this work into the work that this church is doing through the art tent and the health clinic, through our music ministry and worship, through Rutabaga and McGregor, UM Army and VBS. God, God gives us 50 days to prepare ourselves for the Holy Spirit to be unleashed on our hearts, on our church, and on our world. 50 days to prepare for the transforming work of that Spirit. And so the question before us now, after these 50 days have come, is simply this. Are you ready? Are you willing? 
Because what God is about to do in the inbreaking of the Holy Spirit will reorder hierarchies. It rebalances the scales and ushers in a kind of church, a kind of kingdom that doesn't play by the rules that we have been taught. It doesn't adhere to the norms and the customs of genteel society. This is a God who is done with all of that. A God who isn't disillusioned by carefully crafted structures that hold up our lives like a house of cards. No, this is a God who is the creator. A God who has redeemed us from the pits of hell. A God who is now recreating a new heaven and a new earth. A God who says, are you ready? Are you willing to be part of something that doesn't look like the world is trying to give you? but looks like the kingdom that I am trying to give you, a new heaven, a new earth. Sisters and brothers in Christ, this is the language of Genesis and Revelation. This is the language of redemption and revival. The language of all the world coming together, hearing their own languages spoken, and reimagining everything they thought they knew. This is what we felt together as Acts 2 was read aloud in the sacred space. This is the power of Pentecost. Surprise! It's here. For those very first followers of Christ, those first disciples, Pentecost was most definitely a surprise. Because before, before God had poured out the Holy Spirit on that Pentecost day, the day was simply known as a celebration for the harvest called Shavat, a harvest festival that, that the people of God would come together to give thanks for the first fruits of what had been planted and nurtured. And so to mark that harvest festival, the devout followers from all over the kingdom, all surrounding lands would come to the temple. They would bring their first fruits, their first grains to the holy temple. And they would give thanks for the blessings that God had rained upon them, the blessings that had caused good things to grow from the earth. And so now that you kind of hear the setting, now that you know the setting that is coming, can you see this scene before us, the Pentecost scene that we read in Acts, oozing with the imagery of what God is about to do? God is calling God's holy people, bringing them in for a harvest because God has prepared them to feed the nations, to be witnesses to the world, to the depth and the love of God. But this work that God is calling them into, this work that you and I are called into, is not something that we can do on our own. The work that we're called to is too big for us to imagine simply by ourselves, too much for us to live in to without God. Which is why on this harvest festival celebration, as the people are bringing their best to God, God brings to us the very best. The Holy Spirit, the advocate, to be with us to the end of the ages as a guide and a friend, as a redemptive and transforming power that will bring in the harvest. We know that this is what God is going to do because the very last words that Jesus speaks to his disciples when, when everything is coming to an end, the very final thing that Jesus says to them is lifted up in a promise. Jesus says I will, uh, that you will receive the, Holy, the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will be my witnesses throughout the ends of the earth to Judea and Samaria. Those first disciples, those believers who have gathered in together in this home have come together for the festival of celebration for the harvest. And they are gathering with their fellow Jews from Jerusalem and, and their witness together testifies to their shared future hope. A hope for unity of God's people. A hope for restoration, for the ingathering of all who have been scattered. For God to harvest the people that have been planted. It's a vision that Israel's prophets foresaw. A future where God would bring in people like the harvest and make them whole. But this was a vision for the Jewish diaspora. To all be reunited once again as a witness to the glory of God to the nations. To Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. But the story of Pentecost, the one that we find here in Acts chapter 2, holds two very important surprises for those believers who have seen this vision, who feel called to its manifestation. 
And the first is that Acts chapter 2 shows us a widening of that prophetic vision for a reunited diaspora. What we see, what the disciples who have gathered together, of course, they are distinctly Jewish. They have begun as a homogenous group. They are all speaking the same tongue. They all come from the same culture. They worship the same God. And they are hoping that when the Holy Spirit comes from Jesus, that it would make Israel great again. But when the Holy Spirit comes, it comes suddenly. It comes like a violent wind. It comes when they don't expect it. A wind that, that tears off the roof of the house and, and scatters the people to the ends of the earth. And then divided tongues as of fire appear, and those tongues sit on those who are gathered. And they begin to speak these different languages, languages from countries near and far. And yet in the midst of all the languages being spoken from the ends of the earth, everything is clear and understood by those who are gathered around. What these devout followers of Jesus have come to realize is that God isn't bound by the same identity and culture and language that they were. Redemption and power doesn't belong to one people or one way of being in the world. God was bringing a restorative, redemptive power to all people. To people within and without the norms and the customs of Israel. Because God wasn't interested in saving just a few. God isn't checking his list to see who has been naughty or nice. No, God is bringing about redemption, salvation, and, and bringing a spirit to all people, a power to all people, all places on earth. And so when the Holy Spirit descends upon the believers in Jerusalem, it doesn't descend upon them like a dove. That's not what we read here in our scripture. It doesn't come down like a dove. That's not what the early church experienced in the inbreaking of the Spirit. It wasn't like Wesley's Aldersgate moment where his heart was suddenly and strangely warmed. No. <laughs> to quote the movie Jaws, what the disciples felt and what they quickly realized is that they are going to need a bigger boat. And this is why Peter goes outside to explain to this crowd who is gathered around to tell them what has happened. He connects this experience with what is written by the prophet Joel where Joel declares that God's Holy Spirit will be poured out on all people, the sons and daughters, the young and the old, the slave and servant, and they will begin to prophesy. They will behold visions and dream dreams. And Peter proclaims to them, this has been fulfilled. The days have come. The Spirit is poured out upon these disciples, and these tongues of fire have rested upon these gathered believers. But now that this has happened, what they are discovering is that these, these tongues don't settle into a particular people in a particular place. But they are settling into all the languages, all the people of the world. Joel was right. The sons and the daughters would dream dreams, but not just the sons and the daughters of Israel. It would be the sons of daughters of Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. God's Spirit was there in this room, but it wouldn't stay there forever. The Spirit of God, the Pentecost moment, is a moment of movement where exciting things are beginning to happen because God is going to move things around. God is going to move these disciples out of that house. God is going to move you and I. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, he empowers believers to set forth loving and caring and redeeming the world. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the second thing that these believers come to understand. That the Holy Spirit isn't going to be contained by those who receive it. It's not theirs to keep. It's not a gift that they are to have forever for themselves, but it is a gift to give. It is a life that is given to all of us, a life that we are called to share with others. And so Peter tells the people outside the house that through baptism, that they too are going to receive this gift of the Holy Spirit. That God's power is for you and for me. It is for others, for those who are near and far away. Because this is the Spirit of God poured out on all people. And it will come like a violent wind, ready to break down walls of division, blow off the roof of the house, and scatter us into the earth. 
when we think of Pentecost as being the birth of the church, the formation of the church. It's not a church that is designed to be about my way. It's not about what worship looks like in this particular place. It's about what God's way is. God's church enacts border crossings. It doesn't construct walls. God's way builds up the church, the people of God, by diversifying its message to any and everyone who is willing to hear the sweet song of salvation. And when you and I, when we take hold of this, when we understand this deep in our souls, when we allow the Holy Spirit to transform us, rather than trying to transform the Spirit into what we want it to be, how we want it to look, then the church can become the body of Christ. It becomes more whole, more excellent, stronger and faithful to the gospel, more beautiful. When the church realizes its calling towards wider inclusion and greater diversity, towards outsiders and insiders alike, we come to find that the Holy Spirit is global in nature, and it is called to be given away over and over and over again. This is what we see in the power of the gospel, where walls are broken down, where hierarchies and patriarchies find no place in this world. This is what happens when we allow the Spirit to blow as it pleases, rather than holding on to it, keeping it for ourselves. But church, if we are going to be honest with ourselves, if we really want to follow in this Pentecost spirit, then we have to understand that that is the hardest thing to do. It is so hard to keep the gospel and not, or it is so easy to keep the gospel and not want to share it. It, it is so easy to, to read our scriptures, to practice our faith, to come to comfortable and familiar places and not be so accountable to the Acts story. But the truth is, friends, that we still live in a broken and hurting world. We live in a society where, where mass shootings are the everyday norm, where health care costs are unaffordable, where women are expected to bear almost all the reproductive responsibility. It's a world that is untenable for so many, and yet so little has changed. Equity is too slow. Fairness is a forgotten afterthought. Justice is weighed down by partisan inaction. But as the people of the Pentecost story, as the church, we are beneficiaries of those early believers, those very first who were not afraid to share the gospel with those people from Samaria and the ends of the earth. We are beneficiaries of a gospel that has disrupted and challenged political and religious systems that were designed to hoard power at the very top. And so as a church living in the 21st century, as Christians today, we are called to do the same. We are called to stand on the shoulders of that great cloud who witnessed to a power of a Savior like Jesus, who trusted in the wild and unruly spirit that would redeem and transform the world. And when we do this, when we stop holding on to what we think is right, we will find that, that we have followed the Spirit that calls us to see the weight and the woes of the world. This is the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of seeing God's vision, God's good future for the entire world. And the Holy Spirit gives us the boldness to live that out. If you are so bold to live out the calling of the Spirit, whether you identify yourself as a holy roadler or you're a frozen chosen, I need to warn you now that violent winds are going to blow and you're going to feel scattered and tongues of fire will descend upon you and you will be called to speak in new ways and you will start to dream new dreams and you will see and cast new visions. And I know that this is true because many of you have already received that gift. You are called to see and to speak to heal and to set free. I see it in the missions and the ministries that you lead. I see it in the funding you give, the hospitality that you display. But now, 
Today on Pentecost, now is the time for you to prophesy. It is time for you to declare the gospel, time for you to testify and preach. And if you don't think that that is your calling, think again. Because this is the language of Genesis and Revelation. The language of redemption and revival. This is Pentecost. And on Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit passes no one. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are lonely, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all ministers of the gospel, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray to you, Lord God. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. 
we have broken your law, we have rebelled against your love, we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for a joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So would you stand if you are able as we exchange signs and words of God's peace and our love for one another. Well, good morning once again, and welcome to St. Paul's Surprise. Uh, it is a joy to be in worship with all of you this Sunday. Uh, whether you're here in person or you're joining us online, uh, there are pew cards in front of you or uh, buttons on the website uh, to register your attendance to let us know that you're here. Please do so. Uh, and then on the back of that card, there's a space for prayer requests. If there's anything that this community could be holding uh, in prayer, please let us know, and then you can place those uh, in, the, in the offering plate as the ushers come by in just a moment. Uh, it's, it's hard to believe, but somehow uh, here we are at Pentecost. Summer is already upon us, uh, and so there's a lot of things that are kind of gearing toward uh, the summer mode around here. Uh, primarily today, uh, after this service, out on the plaza, we will have Pentecost popsicles for the people of God on the plaza. Um, so if you like alliterations, if you like popsicles or just fellowship, uh, the children's ministry will have those out for, for you all just to celebrate and mark this day in the life of the church. Uh, and then we invite you back this evening at 4 p.m. for our uh, service of Evensong uh, to, to again celebrate uh, the, the, the day of Pentecost. So we invite you to come join us for those two things. And then as we look forward to the rest of this summer, just a few things to, uh, to pique your interest. There is the Pipe Up and Sing children's music uh, camp that's coming up here in a few weeks so please register your little ones if you haven't already done so uh, it will be a camp for those entering grades one through six and feature all kinds of learning about music and pipe instruments um, so that should be a lot a lot of fun and then also on a similar um, note VBS is is at the end of summer but it is still coming up quick and so again we encourage you to register your little ones for that grandkids whoever is in and out throughout the summer in your home um, but also if you have uh, the spirit has given you the gift to um, to lead and serve we would love for volunteers to sign up to join us for that event whether it's teaching in Sunday school or teaching in the classrooms or helping with uh, other stations we would love to have uh, your presence with us so pre please reach out to Kate Flint uh, for more information about that at this time I want to invite our ushers to come forward as we uh, prepare to receive our offering for today. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, you are the gift and the giver of life. And on this day, we are deeply grateful for the gift of your Holy Spirit that you have poured out upon each and every one of us that you have called into our lives to be lives of love and transformation. And so we pray, O oh God, that the gifts that we give would lead into ministries and places where your love and transformation would happen. And so we pray this all in Christ's holy and precious name. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love fell, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved Son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptation of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor and to proclaim release to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time have come when you will save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with, with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, deliver us from, uh, us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new cabinet by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always by baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire as on the day of Pentecost, on the night in which he gave himself up for us. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take it, this is my body given for you. Remember to, to do it in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has been continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of this mighty act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Put out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts, the bread and wine, 
may then be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gift of the Spirit. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ come in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one love, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one love. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The table of the Lord is prepared, and we all are invited to partake. Please come.
Would you join me in the prayer after receiving? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world and the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, I'd like to invite you all to have a seat. We are going to invite those uh, who would like to join the church to come forward this morning. You can join me right here in the middle. Uh, we look forward to receiving uh, those of you who have joined through our uh, new members class called Discover and Connect. So, all right. Welcome. Josh, Ken, and Debbie, they're all joining us today. We're excited to have you, um, and I want you to all get to meet them. So after uh, we do our song and dance. We'll have you over here and well, everyone can greet you and then you can go get popsicles and keep talking and keep, keep, keep the spirit going. So uh, I want to ask you uh, three of these questions. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and the power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord? And will you be loyal to Christ through this congregation of the United Methodist Church, participating fully in its ministries with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Brothers and sisters in Christ, I commend to your love and care these persons whom on this day we receive their membership of this congregation. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. Would you respond? And welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, 
and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant to participate faithfully in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified in Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, welcome again to St. Paul's. Friends, our time has come to a close, but our worship goes into this world. And so as you go from this place, may the power of the Holy Spirit be with you. May the love of God um, empower you and, and give you new visions to dream new dreams for all the ways in which you are called and spread out to this world. So go forth in that Holy Spirit power. Amen. <laughs>